In this video I'm going to show you guys how to install shaders for Minecraft 1.14.3 as well as how to install a shader pack and play around with a couple of the settings to really get some amazing looking well, shaders in Minecraft. Now if you are new to the channel at all, we do a lot of time lapses and tutorials so make sure to hit that subscribe button. But anyway, let's get onto the tutorial. Alright, so the first thing we've got to do is we've got to have played Minecraft 1.14.3 at least once. If you're doing this in the future, because I know a couple of people uh, did, which is really strange, um, when, for example, Minecraft 1.14.4 comes out, um, then you might have to do it a little bit different in order to run that. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. With this new launcher, you go onto Installations, and then you go onto New, you give it a name, so I'm going to call it Vanilla. Uh, 1.14.3, you know, give it a nice name, and then you get to select the version. So if your latest version isn't Minecraft 1.14.3, it's something in the future, 1.14.4 or 5, whatever, when you're trying to install shaders for 1.14.3, then choose that install. So we've got that one right here, like that, and then you just go on to create. That will then appear at the bottom of the list. This is the thing you need to remember. Um, it will kind of freak you out. Well, it won't really freak you out. You'll miss it uh, at first, but yeah, it's down at the bottom. Uh, click on that. Uh, do play and then that will start loading up and everything so you basically get to the main menu screen and then you can cancel out of it from there and uh, I'll catch you guys after that so next thing that we're going to do is we are going to download Optifine so if you go onto the main Optifine website uh, I'll give you guys a link directly to the downloads page um, what you've actually got now is we've actually got Minecraft 1.14.3 as an official kind of um, heading on here, so it's no, no longer a preview version. Sometimes if you click this link, you'll find a load of different preview versions for future versions, so it's always good to actually check there um, as well. So we're going to click on the download. This will actually add, open up AdFly. Um, so be aware with AdFly, okay, because it can be really bad. Um, so in this case, the advert has failed. <laughs> Roblox again. They're really trying to make me do it. But sometimes you can get things up which say I want to give you notifications. Click on deny on those. What you're really looking for is right at the top here, um, you've got skip ad. So after five seconds it could should come up. That is the button you want to click. Uh, do not click anything in here because you'll get loads of stuff. It's a shame that actually this has failed because uh, otherwise you can see the kind of spam that you get. When you do do go onto that, you will then get this download here um, and then you can actually just click on that button there. That'll start downloading. If you do have any problems at all, there we go. Roblox is now really pushing me for it. Um, <laughs> if you do have any problems at all, you can use the mirror um, download. So again, on this downloads, you actually get this thing here in the brackets called mirror. That will take you directly to that page. The reason I tried to push you guys through the AdFly link is because that then the guy that made Optifine can get a little bit of money for it when uh, watching that advert. So what you'll probably get is something that, what, like what Chrome has said for me, which is uh, this type of file can harm your computer. Do you want to keep uh, Optifine 1.14, blah, 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 blah. And we're just going to click on keep. So the reason that this has come up, it's because it's like an exe. A .jar file is like an exe. It can run and change things on your computer. Um, I've been using this for years and years and years, and I've never had a single problem with it. But um, yeah, it's just a warning just to say something can be happening on your computer. So, uh, if you then open up uh, and do show in folder or go to your downloads folder, what you then you get is Optifine. You can see I've installed a lot of Optifine over the years, it seems, uh, all the way going back to 2015 or 2014 even. Um, I'm just going to, for ease, I'm going to actually do cut and I'm actually going to paste this uh, into a folder just on my desktop. Um, this is just so that I can show you guys a couple of things. So the first thing is that it should be recognized a .jar file if you have Java installed. That is the main thing you need to do if you don't have Java installed. There is a link in the description to the main Java installs page where it's got the um, uh, you know different operating systems that you can go for and everything like that. So yeah, there's a load of those. You can then go onto that. You can go onto you know your Java. Uh, it depends if you need 64-bit or 32-bit. If you're not too sure, um, then just have a little Google. It's really easy to find out. Actually, even just showing you guys how to find out, you can actually just, just go to wherever it is, this PC, you can even right click on here, and you can, not right there, right click just in blank space, go onto properties, and they'll actually tell you anyway, it'll do system type 64 bit for me, and uh, yeah, pretty good, yes, I have got 64 gigs of RAM, <laughs> it's quite good, um, but that is like the easy way to actually do it, but again, that is online, so it should be recognized as a .jar file, um, a lot of people have had it where it is actually recognized as, and ignore what I'm doing on screen right now, um, it's actually recognized as a .ra file, that's because when you installed WinRA, you actually selected it for it to be the default program for opening .jar files, and you can always change that, so you can always do right click properties, and then when it says open with, you can actually go and change that. You should be able to find Java uh, Platform SE Binary. 
Um, you, if that isn't on there and you have definitely installed Java, you can go to the more options. You can go down to look for a, another file on this PC. In your program files, you can then go to Java. Then if you've got multiple versions of Java, go for the highest version. Uh, JRE uh, 1.8, that is actually Java 8. It's really misleading, I find that. Um, but go into, the, go into the bin folder from here. And then from here, you'll see this Java W.exe. Now, please do note, it is Java W.exe, not Java .exe. I know it's bizarre. But you can then just do open, for example, with that. And then that will switch that over like that. So now what we're going to do is just double click on it. Uh, sounds really simple, but uh, loads of people have had some problems with that. So in this case, I had a fatal error. So there we go. So what I've actually got, there we go, we've got the nice errors on it. So I'll either get an error where I actually have this, I uh, could not create the Java Virtual Machine flash up, or I should probably show you the other one, um, because I've got it set up in a weird way, um, or it flashes up like that and doesn't do anything, and then it comes back to that error. So how do we actually fix this? Well, what we can do is if we open up a new file explorer, we'll go to this PC. If we then right click in the blank space and go to properties, then what we do is go to advanced system settings, then environment variables. So this should be on the advanced tab. So environment variables, and then you get something like that looks like this coming up. Um, now you should have a Java underscore options. If you don't, you can go to new and you can just do underscore Java uh, underscore options like this. Uh, I'm actually, let me tell you what, let's do that. Um, so I'm actually going to just, actually I don't know if it's going to work that way actually. Um, but yeah, you should be able to create one. Um, so you have something like underscore Java underscore options. Well, not something like exactly like that. And then if you do a dash XMX, that means the maximum amount of RAM that Java can take up. And I'm going to switch that to 512 like that. You can also do XMS, which um, will actually be the minimum. So X at the end is maximum and S is the minimum. Don't ask me how they came up with that, but if you just do OK, and then do OK again, and then guess what? OK again. So that'll then at least go into there. And then what we should be able to do is when we double click on it, it'll now magically work. So yeah, a couple of little bits of issues, and that's how you can fix it, uh, even if the jar fix doesn't actually work for you. So finally, when we get to here, um, you get to choose where your uh, Minecraft is installed. Mine's just in the normal place under you know, app data and, and, and roaming and then .minecraft. So I'm just going to do install. And I also should say Optifine is successfully installed. Yay, it's good. So lots and lots of issues um, that we've actually had with this, which hopefully I've shown those off to you guys. So we're going to go back to this Minecraft launcher. And what you should have, or most people will have, is next time they start the launcher, you have down the bottom here Optifine 1.14.3, you know, Optifine version. Um, some people haven't, and it hasn't defaulted to the top of the list, and so it should be in this list. Um, if it's not in that list, you go to installations, you can then do new, and then you can call this one, I'm just going to call this CCC, and you can actually then select it, so you should have it, actually have it there is a version to select. So that should be all successfully installed. If not, let me know what happened. So from there, you can then press that magical play button, let it start up, and then I'll show you guys how to install a shader pack for this. So here we are, we have got Minecraft running uh, with, hopefully, we're <laughs> running with shaders. So if you go to your options, you should, when you go into video settings, see shaders. So that is kind of like proving that you guys have run the right one. You should also down the bottom have Optifine HD F1 Ultra or whatever version you've actually installed because they do change quite often. The developer is really, really good. What we're going to do then is we're going to go to the sh on, onto shaders. I've completely wiped them out. I'm doing it as if you guys haven't done it before. Um, you then can click on shaders folder. This will then automatically bring you to the folder that you need to put shader packs into. Um, a couple of people have got confused for some reason and put them into resource packs. No, never do that. Um, so anyway, what we'll do now is we'll download some shader packs. Um, there's a couple that I do recommend, Trillitons and also Silders. So a couple of people have had issues with Trillitons, but I'm going to go for Trilliton Shaders uh, version 8 ready and just click on that download, let that start going. And the same with shield, uh, Silders, not Shielders. Um, go with Silders as well, just you know, go down and actually go for high extreme. Ooh, volumetric lighting, that sounds very good. Um, and I actually haven't updated Silders for ages. So there you go, another AdFly link. And there isn't a mirror for that. That's really annoying, but that's fine. There you go. You might get something like this as well on any AdFly link where it says 
notifications always, always, always go on deny. And look, Roblox again is trying to get me. This seems to be a common theme with all of my uh, shader installs. So there we go. Go on to skip ad. And that hopefully... Good God. Ent never enter your password unless you're on the real AdFly site. Never enter your password. Just generally on these kind of things. That's terrible. Um, so there we go. Yeah. Always good. So now we've got these two here. I'm going to open up or get my shader pack. I'm going to fold her up here. I'm going to put it on the side. And I'm also, I haven't got the download, so I'm going to just go onto here, open, uh, show in folder. And I'm just going to move this to the side. So if we go into date modified, two shader packs, uh, they'll be like dot zip files. You don't need to unzip them. I know a couple of people went wrong there and unzip them. All you need to do is just drag and drop them in. And that's it. You have now installed shader packs. And guess what? When we close down this, they're down here. Really cool. So here we go. So if I click on that, it'll do this kind of like loading screen first. That's fine. It doesn't really matter. Go onto that. Go onto there. Get off of this. And got single player. And I need to create a new world. So here we go. I'm just going to go onto this. I'll jump into the world and show you guys what it looks like. So here we go. We have got shaders in 1.14.3. So a couple of people have not liked the motion blur, which is, you know, it's personal taste. What you can do with a lot of the shader packs, you can go to options, video settings, shaders, and then when you're on the actual shader pack that, you, pack that you've got selected, you can actually go to shader options from here, and then the, this opens up a whole new world of being able to set different options. With the blur, it is uh, DOF or depth of field, so you can just switch that off. That's not a problem. Um, the other one that I know some people don't like is on post process, the motion blur. So I personally like it. I think it adds this kind of like different feel to the whole game. But you should get something like this. Um, should be pretty good. If you do get a weird black screen, and I will actually show that on the screen now because uh, one of the guys did like post it to me, which is really, really good. So I'll show you that. And um, yeah, it looks kind of like horrible. The only real fix is, as well as if you get this G buffers type terrain uh, error that comes up in the bottom, uh, the only way to really fix that is to use a different shader pack. Uh, some shader packs are just going to be in incompatible with your graphics card. Um, so Silders is another one that's pretty damn good and seems to work for the majority of people that have that issue with Trilogens. Um, so it's all pretty damn good. There we go. Look at that. Now, it, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, comment, like, and subscribe. If you have any issues at all, do let me know in the comment section below because every time that we can fix an issue, I can then add it into the video so that uh, those more people can actually fix that and uh, kind of get these awesome epic shaders going. So anyway, guys. Thank you very much for watching, comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next one.